I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not allowed my enemies to rejoice over me. Psalm chapter 30 and verse 1. The enemies will not rejoice over you. It is your turn to be victorious on all sides in the precious name of Jesus. You shall triumph on all sides in Jesus' name. Welcome to Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I remain your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas. You are welcome. Now, Moment of Empowerment is a revolutionary and prophetic broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. There is a place for you in life. There is a God-ordained place for you. Is a place of lifting, a place of promotion. However, you need to be empowered in order for you to get into your place. I believe God today that this broadcast will reposition you and get you to your place of glory and honor in the precious name of Jesus. Wherever you have been misplaced, there's going to be a divine restoration your way today in the precious name of Jesus. Now, thank you for tuning in. To the broadcast today, I am very excited and I'm grateful to have you watch this broadcast today. You are blessed of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus. I want to appreciate you for all your calls, the emails, all your comments, and for everyone that has requested for the prayer CD. We appreciate you. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much in the precious name of Jesus. Now, I also like to hear from you. Let me know how this broadcast has affected you. Let me know how this broadcast has impacted you in any way. I will so much be glad to hear from you, to read your emails. You can send an email. You can also call the number on the screen. You can call the, the number, the 972 number on the screen. Let's know how this broadcast has been affecting you, impacting you, and how it has been a blessing. You can go on the website and drop a comment. It will really be appreciated and valued in the precious name of Jesus. Now, I'd like you to get the family together because it is time to be empowered again. Call a friend, tell somebody, invite someone to join you as you watch this broadcast today because God is going to be reaching out to you. Uh, heaven is open already on your behalf. It's going to be full of prophetic prayers. It's going to be full of revelational insight. And God has sent me to someone today because it is not over yet for you. There is still goodness in the agenda of God for your life. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying. It doesn't matter how the devil has been treating you. There is goodness for you in the program of God. And you will surely show forth in the best that God has for your life. So get a friend. Call somebody. You can go on your Facebook wall. Post a message there that moment of empowerment is on right now. And God is set to turn somebody's story around for better in the precious name of Jesus. Now, it is time to be empowered. I realize that God's word is a light giver. God's word activates light and it terminates darkness. The word of God is a light activator. When it gains entrance, it generates light. And the more lighted you are, the more your flight in life. When light, when you are full of light, the oppressions of darkness is subdued. In Psalm 119 and verse 130, the Bible says, The entrance of thy word giveth light. So God's word is full of light, and light is a life giver. When God's word gains access into your life, it generates light, and when light comes, darkness must automatically disappear. The Bible is speaking in John chapter 1 that the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend. God's word is a light giver. I see God sending his word your way today to lighten your path, to terminate every traces of darkness in the precious name of Jesus. Every walk of darkness in your life, every activities of the kingdom of darkness, I see all of them being subdued for you today in the precious name of Jesus. The word of God will bring to pass every promise of God in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is time to be empowered by God's word and you will surely be blessed in the precious name of Jesus. Now right before 
I go into the message for today, I'd like to invite you to the Empowerment Center. I want you to be part of what God is doing here at the Empowerment Center. And I know as you come, you shall surely be blessed. Now, the address is right on the screen, scrolling there. I'd like you to pick up the address and let's connect with grace at the Empowerment Center in any of our services. On Sunday, we meet 10 a.m. to 12 noon in the afternoon. And on Thursdays, we meet 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. You don't want to meet the Empowerment Service. You can be part of any of our services. And as you come, you shall surely be blessed. The Empowerment Center is a non-denominational, life-transforming, multicultural church of God that we really care for you. We want to express the love of God to you. And we want to let you understand that God do loves you. And we love you as well. And no matter how you are, no matter where you are, just come as you are and you shall encounter the power of God at work in the precious name of Jesus. Now, in case you are just tuning in, this is Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I remain your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington. Moment of Empowerment is a revelational and prophetic broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. Now, today, by the Spirit of the Lord, I shall be teaching and ministering on what I have entitled the situation changing power of God's mercy. The situation changing power of God's mercy. God's mercy changes situation. God's mercy changes life. God's mercy is potent enough to change destiny. When you encounter the mercy of God in its fullness, your life does not remain the same. And that is what we want to look into today, how you can encounter the situation changing power that is in the mercy of God. And I know today, God's mercy will speak for you wherever you are in the precious name of Jesus. Now listen to me. Your personal knowledge of God and his provisions for your life is what positions you to enjoy more of him. Your personal knowledge of God, as well as his provisions for your life, is what positions you to enjoy more of God. To lack the knowledge of God and his provisions for your life is to steeply lose out of the best that he has for you. When you don't know the God you serve, when you lack the knowledge of his provisions for your life, then you cannot operate and enjoy in the best that he has for your life. In, Deuteron in Daniel chapter 11, sorry, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, and most importantly, the B part of it, the Bible says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that do know their God, Daniel 11, 32b. So it is the people that knows their God that commands great result in life. To lack knowledge is to be cheaply defeated. So one of the things you must long for in life is the genuine knowledge of God. When you know your God and his provisions for your life, it positions you to be able to enjoy more of his provisions, more of his agenda, and more of his grace for your life. The Bible says they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. They will command results. They will make things happen in life. My prayers for you today is that God's word will open your understanding to the personality and the person of God in the precious name of Jesus. So wherever you are, I'd like you to plant, aspire for the knowledge of God because the knowledge of God is an asset. When you connect with God's knowledge, it connects you with God's provision. It connects you with God's major access. For it gives you access to gain, to enjoy the best of God for your life. The people that do know their God shall be strong. They will not be weak. They will not be moved. Because they know the God whom they serve. That's why the three Hebrew boys said the God whom we serve, he shall deliver us. That's a genuine knowledge of the God they serve. It's not just about doing things. It's about doing things based on the knowledge of what you need to have about it. 
Now, I'd like you to understand one thing about God is that God is a God of mercy. We serve a God of mercy. God is full of mercy. Not only is he full of mercy, he also desires to show mercy to his people. God is a God of mercy. When you understand that God is a God of mercy, it positions you to be able to connect with his mercy and live the best of life in on the earth. It is my prayer today that our eyes of understanding will be quickened in the name of Jesus. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 31, the Bible says, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. That word merciful means full of mercy. He is a merciful God. Now, let's look at some of the components of his mercy. In that same Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 31, the Bible says, He will not forsake thee. So, as part of God's mercy, he does not forsake you. The Bible says, neither will he destroy thee. So, God's mercy prevents you from destruction. The Bible says, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which is swear unto them. So, God is a God of mercy. Not only that, he also desires to deal with his people mercifully. God desires to deal with his people mercifully. He loves to show mercy to his people because he is a God of mercy. Mercy is his nature. The Bible says in Psalm 145, verse 8 to 9, Psalm 145, verse 8 to 9, that the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The word compassion also means mercy. The Bible says he is slow to anger and of great mercy. So he wants to show mercy to his people. Look at verse 9. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. The mercy of God, they are over all his works. Therefore, I pray for you. The Bible says God is good to all. It will show in your life that God is good to you. There will be full evidences that God is good to you. God will be good to you in your marriage. God will be good to you concerning your children. Everything that is not good in your life, the goodness of the Lord will cover them up for you in the precious name of Jesus. The Bible says his tender mercies are over all his works, including you. You are one of God's work and his mercy is over you. Listen to me. God's mercy is the cleanser for our mess in life. It doesn't matter how far you have gone down, how deep we have messed up or we have made mistakes or we have missed it. God's mercy cancels our mess and cancels our mistakes. That is one of the major components of God's mercy. The mercy of God is potent enough to cancel every mess, cancel every mistake, cancel every error that we might have committed in the journey of life. Now, let's look at a scriptural situation, how the mercy of God transformed and changed the destiny of a particular personality. In John chapter 8, a pretty long verse of the scripture, but we're going to go through it together as we connect with Revelation on how God's mercy can change life and change situation. John chapter 8, we look at it from verse 1 to verse 11. The Bible says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down, and he taught them. Verse 3. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman that was taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. This woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now verse 5. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what said thou? Verse 6, this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Verse 7, so when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. 
verse 8, and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which had been convicted by their own conscience went one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus lifted himself up and he saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thy accusers? Had no man condemned thee? Verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now, the, 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 the all of this story is talking about a woman that was actually caught committing an offense. She was committing adultery. The Bible says they caught her in the act. The Bible says certain people rose up against her to accuse her because they actually caught her. And according to the law, she should be stoned. Then suddenly they brought the woman to Jesus to tempt Jesus to see what he's going to say so that they can have a cause to accuse him. I don't know who you are. Everyone, anywhere, looking for a way, a platform, a channel, an opening, an access to accuse you in life, to find fault in you. Door will not open unto them. They will not have a legal ground to hold you down. In the name of Jesus, they were looking for ways to accuse him. They were looking for ways to pin him down. But lo and behold, the Bible says Jesus stood down as if he did not hear what they were saying because he knew better. He knew what they did not know. He knows that somebody can be caught in an offense, but that is not the end of the life of that person. One thing I saw here I want to share with you is what I have called the act. The act, there was actually an act. From verse 3 to 4, the Bible says they brought the woman that was taken in adultery and they set her in the midst. They were about putting her to public shame. The Bible says they said to the master, we caught this woman in the very act of it. I saw from the scripture that every secret act will surely be made open. One thing I saw and that God wants me to share with you is that maybe you think you are doing something secret in secret that nobody sees you. Even if man does not see you, God sees you. This woman was caught in the act. So I saw that people can actually catch others in the act of whatever they are doing. So whatever you are committing, whatever thing you are involved in, any acts that you are doing, either good or bad, people are seeing you. In case people don't see you, God is seeing you. So I saw there that there is no secret act or activity or involvement that will not be revealed. Even if it's not revealed now, it will surely be revealed later. This woman was actually caught in the act of committing adultery. However, that was not the end of the life. You might have been committing some acts. You might have found it difficult to stop doing it. Maybe you have been stealing. Maybe you have been lying. Maybe you are addicted to something. You might have been committing some act and you know this is wrong, but you can't just stop it. Help is on the way for you today. Please don't bury your head down because of the act you have been committing. You might have even be caught. There might be the case before you right now. You might have been caught doing it also. But the story of this woman showed us that when mercy speaks, they erase, they, it, it erases the error. It cancels the mistake. But one thing you must do is that don't let the condemnator, don't let the, the devil continue to condemn you for what you are doing. What Jesus is sending to you today is not that the act is not good. The act is not good, but more importantly, there is a better life for you. There is a new life for you. Only if you will be willing to drop the act and pick him up as your savior. Number two thing I saw here. Is that there is what I call the accusers. The woman was caught in the act, but there are also what I call the forces of the accusers. The Bible says in verse 5 to 6, the people said, or the Pharisees said, Moses in the law commanded us that anyone that is caught doing this should be stoned. But what do you say? What do you say they are looking for a channel to accuse him? They brought the woman. They, uh, they accuse the woman of what she has done. They brought the voice of accusation. It's always a voice of destruction. The voice of accusation is always a voice of destruction. I saw from this that the voice of accusation is a voice of judgment. But the mercy of God always triumphs over judgment in life. The Bible says in James chapter 2 verse 13, And mercy rejoices against judgment. 
So God's mercy always rejoices against judgment. You might have been caught in the act. You might have been accused. Maybe you are already on the death row. But I can tell you something. If you will acknowledge God as the Savior and you will bow before him and accept his mercy, mercy can speak for you. Mercy can acquaint you. Mercy can bring you out. The woman was caught in the act, but the act was not the end of, his, of her life. The act was not the end of her life. What have you been committing? What have you gotten yourself involved into? Stop condemning yourself. Stop entering into self-condemnation. You might have missed it. You might have messed up. And the voice of accusation might have really been risen up against you. But Jesus said, that is not the end. That is not the end of the journey. That is not the end of life. That is not the end. There is still a second chance for you. That is what God has sent me to you to come and announce today. Maybe you have been doing it in secret and nobody has seen you. Maybe you have even been caught. You are tired of doing it. Or even if you are still doing it and you don't even know the way out. Have you been addicted to drugs? Have you been addicted to anything? Whatever it is that they, are you committing pornography? Have you find yourself so in, uh, connected to this thing that you can't just stop it? And you know you need the mercy of God. God's mercy is reaching out to you wherever you are. Even if the voice of accusation has been coming, the devil has been telling you you can't stop this. The devil has been telling you God cannot forgive you because of the animosity of what you have committed. That is not the end of, God, of life. God is a God of judgment. But more than that, he's also a God of mercy. He has sent me to you today to come and tell you that his mercy is available. But you must be willing to bring your mess to him so that he can accept you and cleanse you. Rather than continuing in the act, rather than continuing following the people that you know and making you to do what you don't want to do. You might have been sent out by people. You might have been condemned by people that you thought will accept you. But Jesus is saying, I'm not condemning you. I'm not forsaking you. I'm not sending you away. Come as you are. When they brought this woman, they set her in the midst, thinking that was the end. But Jesus looked at her. I saw that there are voices of condemnation everywhere. The voice of the accusers. And I saw that the devil is the master accuser. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren, accusing them before God day and night. So the devil is behind the voice of accusation. The devil is always out to ensure that you don't come out from it, to ensure that the act is what kills you. He wants you to think that there is no way of escape. He wants you to think that you cannot get help. He wants you to think that God is not going to forgive you. No, God is willing to forgive you. God is willing to accept you. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Maybe you have been caught in the act. Or you might not even have been caught. But you are doing it secretly. And God is saying to you, I can see you even if nobody is seeing you. But because he can see you, he's saying if only you will come, he's going to accept you. He wants to give you a better life. He wants you to stop that drugs. He wants you to stop that addiction. He wants to help you. He wants to bring a hand to it for you. He wants you to stop the pornography. He wants to help you. He wants to help you, but he's saying, come to me with your mercy. Because my mercy is enough. What is mercy? Mercy actually is saying something. That you are not to get what you deserve. Withheld punishment. Mercy will withhold your punishment and give you advancement. He gives you a new life. That is what God's mercy can do. This woman encountered the mercy of God. And the last thing I saw there is the acceptance. The acceptance. Jesus stood up. He said, where are the accusers? Where are the accusers? And there was no one. All of them dropped the stone. All of them left her. Many a times you think that the people accusing you don't even have their own mess also. But when you look within, because Jesus can see everyone, he sees that they also have some mess. Rather than bowing down and receiving his mercy, they left and they continued. But he doesn't want you to continue in that. He doesn't want you to continue misbehaving. He doesn't want you to continue doing the things that mess you up before the Lord. He's saying, my mercy is available for you today. And Jesus said to the woman, I will not condemn you. That is the same voice is coming to you today. Neither will I condemn you. I'm not condemning you, but look at what Jesus said to her in verse 11. Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. That is the voice of mercy. Go and sin no more. 
go and continue doing this thing no more. Because when you receive mercy, mercy gives you a new life. And by the mercy of God, this woman had a new beginning. By the mercy of God, her, her past was cancelled. By the mercy of God, she was delivered from the accusers. By the mercy of God, she was rescued from the death penalty. By the mercy of God, mercy gave her a new beginning. I don't know what is in your past that the devil is using to torment you, to accuse you. Mercy is speaking on your behalf. You are coming out. The mercy of God will speak for you expressively in the name of Jesus. Now, if you are saying with me, Pastor, something is in my past and it's tormenting me. Or oh, I am doing something now. I'm involved in an act. I don't know how to stop. I've been doing this long, long enough. And I've gone for help, but no one can help me. I have a good news for you. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. People might have condemned you. Sometimes even the church might have condemned you. But lo and behold, Jesus is opening his hand to you saying, come the way you are. Come as you are. I want to receive you. I want to help you. That is what Jesus is saying to you right now. So maybe you are listening to me. And you have something hidden in your past. Or you have something, an act you are committing right now. And you don't know how to stop. But the mercy of God has come to you today. Because God sent me to you to tell you that there is a situation changing power in his mercy. I'd like to pray this with you. If you are passing through that situation, call the number on the screen right now. If you are having a note of accusation, call the number on the screen. I want to pray with you. Call in for prayers right now. Because an end must come to the accusations. There must be a new beginning for you. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. But go and sin no more. I'd like to pray with you. If you're saying, I want to accept him as my Lord and Savior. Say, Father, I come to you today. Have mercy upon me. I am sorry for all I have committed. Help me, Lord. Today I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Cleanse me. Give me a new beginning. In Jesus' mighty name. If you have prayed that prayer, I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear from you. Because God is said to heal you totally. Cancel your past. Give you a new beginning in the precious name of Jesus. I know you have been blessed of the Lord. I pray for everyone listening to me and watching me right now. May the peace of God rest upon you. I decree divine blessings over you. In the name of Jesus, may the hand of God be upon your family. I silence the voice of the accusers over you. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. And I would love to invite you to the Empowerment Center in any of our services. On Sundays, we meet 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And on Thursdays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Come and let's connect together as we celebrate Jesus at the Empowerment Center. I can guarantee you something. As you come, you shall surely be blessed. The address is right there on the screen. Pick up the address. You can also call the number for direction. You shall surely be blessed. In the precious name of Jesus. Till I come your way again next week, stay empowered and keep empowering others. God bless you. Amen.